Welcome, everyone, to TalkNetwork.com. This is a special report on the news that Charlie Sheen is now HIV positive, or at least that's what's being reported by the National Enquirer, which says that decades of debauchery have finally caught up to Charlie Sheen. The magazine also claims that he's been covering up his HIV positive status for at least four years and that he has slept with many, many people, hundreds, perhaps over a thousand women, Uh, over these years, and thereby the implication is that he has given them HIV. This story is rocking Hollywood right now, but here joining me today to counter some of what's going on with this story is Liam Sheff. Now, Liam is the author of Official Stories, which is a fantastic book. It's one of the books that I have strongly recommended, which talks about official narratives being total BS and cover-ups for all kinds of things. From, you know, AIDS, as we'll talk about here, to other official stories, false flags, and so on. Uh, Liam tells me that you can't. Uh, people who slept with Charlie Sheen can't be HIV positive because he can't be HIV positive either. So, Liam, thank you for joining me, and please explain what do you mean that he can't be HIV positive? Hi, Mike. It's wonderful to be on and. Uh Uh, always a big fan of of your work so thank you for this opportunity uh the aids machine you know aids is kind of dead nobody talks about it anymore it's it's wonderful for them uh one of the most cynical branches of modern medicine the aids industry that they have a poster boy like charlie sheen who is disreputable and you know managed to speak uh, against the official narrative of 9-11 before going down some sort of I, I, i like a like a permanent meltdown sinkhole into some sort of anarchic narcissism, which we all watched, right? And we bought his t-shirts, winning, all that yes. stuff. Um, he's famously gone out with drug addicts um, and strippers and, uh, n- you know, not knocking their pro- their profession. But these are people who probably don't have great healthy lifestyles. And maybe he was convinced by somebody to take one of these tests. They'll say he's HIV positive and they won't ask They'll tell they'll tell you he got it from something. Um, so I have to just put it to the audience and the audience of media, uh, the, the, the media people out there who won't ask any questions because they won't. They'll just report it. He's HIV positive because he said so, because he got tested somewhere. So the question I have to ask you is, how do you know that you're HIV positive? Right, right. How? What's the science behind it? Because I remember this this documentary, House of, was it House of Numbers? House of Numbers. And in House of Numbers, I remember them showing how HIV is tested, and it wasn't, it didn't look scientific to me, and I run a science lab, so I'm very familiar with scientific methodologies, but they would ask people questions about how many partners they slept with, and that would be part of their diagnosis, but how can that be? If it's a virus, then you shouldn't need to ask questions of the person's behavior, right? The virus alone should determine whether you're positive or negative, right? Uh, Yeah, well, medical testing is... (laughs) <laughs> it's such a crapshoot. You know, they got, they get people with this HP, uh, HPV thing. They get people with the Hep C thing. So they they put they rolled out Hep C a few years ago. The tests are non-specific and the treatments are nonsense. But if you're 50 years old and you're in the risk group for what, ha- being 50, 60, having had a lot of alcohol in your life, and so having a, a slightly malfunctioning liver, so they get anybody in that group and then they test them. If you're not in the group of people who are you know, going to have a slightly malfunctioning liver due to drug use, alcohol use, or age, they don't want to test you for uh, hep C. The same thing is true in the HIV spectrum. Um, AIDS really was originally called GRID, and it, and it was a, 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 really a calamity of gut-borne diseases uh, that occurred in the gay in the fast lane uh, gay community in a, in a few ghettoized little parts of cities where gay people were allowed to live without being crucified in you know, Kansas and Utah and the rest of the country. So that's another story. Maybe we'll get into that. But they invented a test, a blood test. And the blood test was called, don't get lost in the wonky stuff, everybody. It doesn't matter. There's no quiz at the end. But they called it an HTLV3 test. And, and they said that the test was, was really not very good. It was not very effective. I mean, it was you know, between 2% effective and maybe in some people 90% okay. So they do this test and it could be as bad as like 2% true, which means it's false, you know. But does it does it render false positives or false negatives or both? Uh, well, that's the thing. What's a false positive? What's a false well, negative? 
Well, a false positive is is they say, it says you have HIV, but you don't. I mean, we see that all the time in the cancer industry, false positive mammogram analysis where they say you have breast cancer, but you really don't. Right. I mean, that's very common. Right. So, but why does the test give a false positive? It's because it's not a test for the thing. They invented this HIV test, HTLV3 test, by taking proteins from a, a handful of guys, literally, I think it was 10 guys, and they, they just siphoned proteins out of the blood samples. They then cloned those antibodies, those uh, antigens, over time, and, and, and now they've refined them. So they have a set of nonspecific proteins that were, they were growing in, in tumor cells. Um, they had a line of cancer cells that they were growing these proteins in, and they've siphoned them out of there, and then they've molecularly cloned them. And then they go and they, they take your blood sample. And, and they run your blood sample. They dilute your blood sample extraordinarily, or they used to, uh, because everybody's got anti antibodies that respond to these proteins. So they had to make sure... Really? Yeah, they had to make sure it was very, very diluted. They used to have to dilute the HIV test. You, they'd have to dilute your blood 400 times because otherwise everybody would be positive. Everybody's wow. got these responsive proteins. So the tests were terrible, terrible. From the beginning. Okay, so... You're saying that, okay, so the, they say that if you, if you respond, if you have some of these same proteins, then you're HIV positive. Yes, but yes. couldn't there be lots of other ways that you could have these same proteins in your body? The medical literature is un, uh, unequivocal on this point. There are some, I don't know, 70 to 100 distinctive bodily processes, diseases, non-disease states, including pregnancy, prior pregnancy, vaccination, recent vaccination, long time ago vaccination, alcoholic uh, problems, liver problems from alcohol, um, what, normal respiratory infections that they know in the standard medical literature will cause these nonspecific tests to pop, to come up, really? yeah, to come up reactive. Absolutely. So if, you, if, if you've been pregnant or if you have been vaccinated, you could test positive for HIV even though you don't you never slept with Charlie Sheen. Yeah, and, well, and because, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you never slept with Charlie Sheen. Yes. Well, I hope you, you got something out of it, some money or something. But uh, <laughs> the there, there, they had no particular virus or particle to work with when they were making the test. I think that that should be put at the bottom rung of this conversation. They weren't working with a particular particle. They were working with proteins from guys who were a little who were sick. But that's like saying that you, you, you know, you, there, by the way, I can show you studies in which mice, dogs, milkmaids, this is a very funny one, milkmaids, girl, uh, women who milk cows were, were testing positive and they said, well, they weren't positive, they, they didn't have a sex disease, they had just been milking cows and the exposure to the milk made them HIV positive, but they weren't HIV positive. Really? Yes, I can show, I can show you that study. Well, gosh, I've milked goats. <laughs> Does that mean I'm going to test positive do, for, for AIDS do not, or HIV? Do not ever take an HIV test. Do not give them that power. They have a nonspecific polyreactive antibody test. Now, you were exactly right in the beginning. How then did they determine who's really positive if they have a test that's so crazy? They have to only test people who they consider to be at risk. Or wow! It, so it's a it, it's a behavior. It, it, this this sounds like psychiatry, where they look at your kid and they say he's ADHD. It's profiling. It's uh, you're you're an LA cop uh, driving around and you see a kid running down the street, <laughs> and he's a white kid in nice shoes, and you go, he's out for a run, and you see a black kid running down the street, and you go, hey, you pull over and you chase him. You're profiling. Same behavior, yeah. different colors. Same. And I'm very, very serious. They actually are, are absolutely clear that they're profiling. They call it um, um, risk group analysis uh, according to the Bayesian algorithm, right? So they have very, very special language for it because, of course, they're not racist and they're not profiling, but they are. So if, if what you're saying is true, and I, I still have some skeptical questions for you, obviously, but you know a lot more about this than I do. You've done a lot more research for many years on this, but if what you're saying is true, then it sounds like the the test is really just sort of the bogus science to back up this this profiling assessment, kind of the way, well, you know, with with global warming, they fake the science to fit their agenda, or with uh, with vaccines. I mean, obviously, we're talking about the CDC here with AIDS. You know, with vaccines, a lot of the outbreaks happen among children who were vaccinated, but they never really tell us that that's never reported 
they, they use the so-called quack science of vaccination, which we know is fraudulent because we've heard it directly from the vaccine virologists who work for Merck, for, for God's sake. And we know it's fake, but they still use that science to back up their agenda. Is that, is that what you're saying is going on here, that the test is just a way to invoke something that sounds kind of sciencey? It's, it's well and wonderfully said. They, they need... Um you know, this really evolves and emerges from the same uh, academic, quasi-religious, you know, university system, which was really part of the monastery system. So people would come forward, and and they would they would put forward a prescription or something that they that they got through some mental gyrations, and they would say, yes, but this is approved of by you know the more important person in in this community. So your PhD paper is approved of by your supervisor or by the old uh, prelate or priest or abbey or whatever. So they need something that makes people say, oh, this must be true because. Well, if it must be true because it comes out of the scientific establishment, we also have to read their fine print. Remember, they have lawyers too. Uh, there's a reason, you know, you used to be able to sue people, uh, sue the va- vaccine manufacturers for killing your children, but you're not allowed to anymore, and you know this well. That's right. Go- That's right. They have total immunity now. Because of a 1988, I believe, case uh, in which a child was, was, you know, wheeled in and was unable to function, they awarded this family 2 or $3 million, and the ma- vaccine manufacturer pleaded uh, to the American, essentially, government and said, we can't you know, we can't really do much with vaccines anymore because they're going to tear us apart. Uh And the Supreme Court said vaccines are, and you know this, you know this one well, are vaccines are, what is the term they use? Uh, Well, I don't, I don't know the term you're talking about, but that's when they created the vaccine injury compensation program, the court that stands above the Supreme Court. Right. There's, um, it's, they, they, they said that vaccines were manufactured, um, unavoidably unsafe. we got to go to break here. Uh, sorry to interrupt. we got to go to break. But you're listening to TalkNetwork.com, folks, an interview with Liam Sheff on the Charlie Sheen HIV breaking news. We'll be right back after this break with uh, Liam Sheff. <laughs> 